little unlawful help here and there. Sometimes cheating is the only way. Yeah. Hello and welcome, David here from Blitz Breakdown. Last week I uploaded this video, which featured a game played between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Gustafsson. And in that game, Carlsen played against Gustafsson on somebody else's account. And although this video has been around for many, many years, I found the comment section particularly interesting of how critical people were of Carlson and his actions in that game. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at those comments and we're gonna be looking at some other claims of cheating in online games played by Carlson. But more importantly though, we're finally gonna hear from Jan Gustafsson and see what he has to say about this game. Only a few short comments, but still really insightful. So stick around to the end if you wanna see that. Before we jump into things, however, if you could consider on passanting the subscribe button and under promote 4 king the notification bell, <laughs> for future videos, I'd appreciate it. So after doing some internet research, I discovered that this thing that Carlson was doing against Gustafsson has a name. It's called smurfing. In a nutshell, smurfing is when a high rated player will use an alt account to disguise their true strength and basically just destroy everyone in their path. Back in 2014, Carlson did an AMA and Ask Me Anything on Reddit. One of the questions that came up, I thought was really interesting and very relevant to this video. Do you ever log on to sites like chess.com as an anonymous player and just crush people for fun? Once in a while, he responds, I've used some of my friends' accounts and won a couple of games, or a lot, which suggests that this wasn't a once-off, this is something that he was doing regularly. So the comment section seems to be a little bit divided on this whole smurfing issue by Carlson. If we read this comment over here, why is he using his account though? Isn't that considered cheating? By the way, nice video, thank you. And the first reply, it's considered a prank, bruv, chill out. So both of those comments are kind of equally liked. My take on it is that I think context matters a lot. Carlson and Gustafsson were very, are very good friends. They work together on Chess24, on Banter Blitz, and obviously have like a very strong relationship. And also Banter Blitz, right? You know, it's not like sit quietly and play chess and get offended when someone hurts your feelings chess. <laughs> so I think uh, Carlson was just playing into that by making uh, young Gustafsson's life a little bit difficult. That said, I do think that Carlson was edging into a little bit of a gray area, especially considering that this wasn't an isolated event, something he was doing regularly to his own admission. But in my opinion, not quite as dodgy as this next clip. So let's take a look. Confused. Yeah. Oh, f I kind of play a five. That was not planned. But he's confused. He's still confused. As you are. Wait, you can trap it. <laughs> oh. So this one's kind of funny. Grandmaster David Howell in the black shirt on the right of Magnus Carlsen has just pointed out to Magnus that he can trap Daniel Norditsky's queen if he plays the right move. Let's see if you can find the winning move for white. Three, two, one. Oh. Oh, cheating. Tinder, you can trap it by if you click quite right. Yeah. If you, win the tour, if you win now, I will. Uh... Oh boy. <laughs> These backseat gamers. That's a ban. That's a ban, boys. <laughs> Get out. So this is a bit of a weird one. Clearly, it wasn't Magnus Carlsen's fault. It was David Howell who gave the winning move. But still, Carlsen received external help and that ultimately decided the game. I'm not saying that I would have known what to do in that situation, but maybe offering a draw, even just resigning and moving on to the next game, you are playing a bullet game, so there isn't a whole lot of time to explain the situation in the chats, but maybe there were options available to Carlson, but he didn't choose any of them. He took the winning move, and again, not the first time, as we'll see in this next clip. Now we just got to pawn down and no king. You're threatening the endgame. Wish you blunders. Oh, I didn't even see it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So again, Daniel Noroditsky in this game, playing with the white pieces, taking a little bit of a beating from Carlsen with this external help. He plays queen to g5, which you can see is not the best move. Carlsen was thinking about moving this rook on b7, which also wouldn't have been a great move until his friend points out, play queen to h6. Well, he doesn't say it. He just suggests that he can go into a forced end game. And this is really the only way to do that. Of course, the queen is pinned to... Uh, her own king and has to accept the exchange at some point or another. And now, uh, even though white is up a pawn, you really want to be careful about trying to defend the pawn on h5 because if you play rook to h1, you're walking into a fork. So this is a perfectly uh, fine position for black and it's equal and Carlson would not have found this if it weren't for that external help. That is so nice. A little unlawful help here yeah, and there. You gotta ban your both. Uh... Sometimes cheating is the only way. Yeah. Aryan's guide to relationships. <laughs> exactly. 
you know me too well. So again, we have an example of Magnus Carlsen operating in this gray area, bending the rules a little bit. I'm sure from his perspective, he's thinking, oh, if someone gives me like a suggestion of a move, how often is it going to actually be relevant to me? I'm the best player in the world. Most of the time, it's not going to be relevant. But it's still, in both of these instances that we just saw, affected the outcome of the game. And I think the thing that he's thinking is that, okay, well, it's not a high stakes situation where there's lots of prize money at stake and I'm not using a chess engine. What's the big deal? It's not that important. But what's actually at stake is a lot more important, in my opinion, and that is having some kind of integrity with the way you play. Okay, so that, uh, <laughs> that sounds a little bit like something a teacher would say, and I guess that's probably why I'm saying it, because I am a teacher. But in seriousness, Carlsen is at kind of the top of the pile in terms of chess players. Everyone is looking at him. Every small uh, detail of his play and the things that he says and his attitude and the way he conducts himself when he's playing is going to be scrutinized by everyone. And I think the fact that he's not taking that into consideration, I mean, and if you actually think of it uh, from that perspective, just resign the game. Just resign the game if anyone is gonna question your integrity at all. Because it, it, is it really that important? I think if he thought about it for a bit, he would realize that it isn't. It, his integrity is way more valuable. That said, people are people, nobody's perfect. If you follow anyone around long enough with a camera, you'll see them do something stupid and probably with me more than most. So I'm not gonna be super judgmental, but yeah, it is my two cents. Let me know in the comments what you think. And now to wrap up this video, let's take a look at uh, Jan Gustafsson's thoughts on that infamous game played in 2015. So I will preface this by saying, unfortunately, it's not that super satisfying clip that we can see Magnus Carlsen telling Jan Gustafsson, ha ha, it was me, I was trolling you the whole time. That doesn't exist as far as I can tell. But this clip is really interesting because it was taken from a banter blitz where Magnus Carlsen and Jan Gustafsson were hanging out together. And also, really interestingly, they were playing that uh, famous YouTube channel guy, uh, Agad Mator. So in that game, you can see Jan Gustafsson's comments relate to, to him. So let's take a look. Pawn. Let's just grab all his pawns, I think. Yeah. He's probably too excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bishop. This can end careers, I got Mator. I have yeah. one viral video, it's where Magnus trolls me and beats me in like 18 moves <laughs> in a dash. So you better be nervous. Bishop. And that sadly is all that we get from Jan Gustafsson. It's so irritating. I wish that I could find like an interview of him talking about this or some more detailed explanation of what happened in this game. But one of the things that kind of makes me sad in that comment is just that he's like, oh, this can ruin careers. Often they say the truth is said in jest where like, I think, okay, he realizes that it, it was a joke, but in the back of his mind, I think he'll be thinking, oh my gosh, like this stupid joke is the thing that I'm best known for. If you go and search for Jan Gustafsson, you will find that clip first before anything else. That is his legacy online, at least. In some ways that's sad, but in other ways, I think it's actually pretty cool because of the way he conducted himself in that game. Like he really, um, handled himself really well. Well, he didn't accuse his opponent of cheating, which he could have easily have done considering how quickly his opponent was making those moves. And uh, really just an all round class act. And I had a lot of respect for Jan Gustafsson the more I went through this video uh, and the more I watched him play. So I think that's my extended two cents. That's my five cents on this video. <laughs> if you enjoyed watching this video, do consider hitting that old subscribe button and the like button and all that jazz. And I will see you all in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.